Okay, let's jump on in and, and not be afraid to deal with the time complexity of merge sort. Um, if, if you get your head around the recursion, probably draw a picture of this as a tree with, let's say, at the top at the top of your picture is a node representing the original array that you want to sort. And coming down from that are two, uh, two nodes. Think of this as like a binary tree, but, 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 but just representing what we're doing here. Um, so the left child representing um, the left half of the array and the right child representing the right half of the array. And then of course each of those gets split so they have two child so there'll be two child nodes off of each of those a left half and a right half and so forth and and that balanced binary tree is a nice visual aid that unfortunately my slides don't don't contain um, to help you visualize um, what we're doing here okay um, let's go I claim that it will suffice, and this is a bit of hand waving, it'll be sufficient for us to think about how merge sort behaves in the case when it's used to sort an array of length n where n is a power of 2, say 2 to the kth power. Okay? I was doing earlier when I said, well, if we had. If we had an array of length 16, it would get chopped into subarrays of length 8. Each of those would get chopped into subarrays of length 4. Each of those would get chopped into subarrays of length 2. Each of those would get chopped into subarrays of length 1. It makes the discussion a lot easier, of course, because if we started with an array of size 10, then that would get chopped into two subarrays of length 5, and each of those would have to be chopped into uneven subarrays, one of length two and one of length three. And you know, clearly that complicates the discussion. So I'm I'm gonna basically say this. Trust me that if we analyze the case when n is a power of two, um, that analysis will actually carry over uh, to the arbitrary n case. And and if you can't me, then I invite you to look further into it on your own. Okay, this is very repetitious at this point. If we start with a list of length 2 to the k, we cut that in half and we get two lists. I say lists, subarrays, it doesn't matter. Um, we'll get two lists of length k minus 2 to the k minus 1. We chop those and we get four lists of length 2 to the k minus 2. We chop each of those subarrays and we get 8 subarrays of length 2 to the k minus 3 and so forth. Okay? And we keep going like that until we get down to 2 to the k lists, each one of which has length 1. Alright? How many levels of recursion were required? How many um, levels of chopping were necessary? Well, look at it, and you should be able to convince yourself the answer is K. All right? Um, now, here's another question. Suppose we have two lists, each of length M, and, and suppose they're both sorted already, and we want to use our merging technique to merge together two sorted a list to, to create one bigger sorted list. How long will that take? And it's not very hard to convince yourself that that requires time capital theta of M. Okay? Because after all, you have to scan one of those, you have to scan each of those two um, lists from left to right. Okay, and it takes capital theta m time to go from left to right in either one of them. So I don't want to belabor that. You you can you can worry about that some more on your own. Um, 
the number of times that two lists of length 2 to the j have to be merged together in, in, in merge sort is um, half, of that, half the number of such. What do I mean? The wording here is a little awkward. So let's think about this. Um, going back a couple bullets, how many lists are there of length 2 to the j? Okay, well, we saw that there were four lists of length 2 to the k minus 2. There are eight lists of length 2 to the k minus 3. Eight, eight is the same as 2 to the third. There are 2 to the third lists of length 2 to the k minus 3. So if you think about that, how many lists are there of length 2 to the j? And the answer is 2 to the k minus j. Okay? You have 2 to the k minus j um, sublists each of length 2 to the j. And they have to be merged together in pairs to go from one level of recursion up to the level of that. All right? So the number of such lists is 2 to the k minus j. Half of that is the number of mergings that have to be done to take you from one level up to the next level. Okay, half of 2 to the k minus j is 2 to the k minus j minus 1. So now, <clears throat> if you take uh, these mergings, 2 to the k minus 1 minus j of them, uh, taking you from one level of recursion up to the level above that, and multiply by the time it takes to do each of those mergings. Well, each of those, each of those sublists we're talking about, those subarrays, they have size 2 to the j. And we said that, uh, that the time to do such a merging would be capital theta of 2 to the j, since 2 to the j is the size of those sublists. All right, so in other words, um, a constant times, or at least approximately a constant times 2 to the j is how much time it requires to do each of those mergings. And the number of such mergings is 2 to the k minus j minus 1. You put that together, and you quickly see the j's canceling, and you wind up with a constant, which happens to be c over 2, multiplied by 2 to the k, since 2 to the k is just another name for n, this is a constant times n. In other words, capital theta of n, capital theta of n expresses how much time it's going to take to do the mergings, all of the mergings that take you from one level of recursion up to the level above it. Okay? So that's interesting because that's independent of the level that you're talking about. It's independent of j. All right. But you're not done until you multiply that by the number of levels. And uh, here in this bullet, I'm just being rather repetitive. We've already gone to the trouble to convince ourselves that the number of levels is base 2 logarithm of n. Or maybe it's one more than the base 2 logarithm of n. It doesn't matter. Base 2 logarithm of n is close enough. So we take base 2 logarithm of n, multiply it by capital theta of n, and we end up with capital theta n times base 2 logarithm of n exactly as advertised several slides ago. That is the time complexity for merge sort. That is um, an expression of how much time it's going to take for merge sort to sort a list of length n.